Hi guys, it's Joe here from Rufio. Welcome to the channel. If this is your first time here, welcome aboard. You should definitely hit subscribe and the notification bell before you go any further and realize how fucking garbage this content is. But if this is not your first time on the channel, welcome back, you absolute fucking loser. But in either case, thank you very much for coming along. I do appreciate you being here. For today's video, we are fulfilling a request. Somebody wanted me to do Sacred Beasts. So I spent a little bit of time playtesting online, taking a look at existing lists out there, and coming up with my own variant, something that I find has worked well for me. Now, if you're thinking Sacred Beasts, they're almost impossible to summon. Well, not anymore. The new support gets entirely around that. And in fact, what this has become is a bit of an OTK machine. And on top of all of that, it can be done on a really budget friendly scale. Speaking of which, if you're watching this video and then you're feeling inspired to pick up some Yu-Gi-Oh singles, maybe even some Pokemon ones for that matter, you should check out the channel sponsors Jam Jam Cards UK. There will be a link down in the description to their eBay store and if you use that link you'll go ahead and get yourself a cheeky discount courtesy of yours truly. But anyway that's enough waffling on from me, let's get stuck in to the deck profile. So before we get started, let me first apologise if there are any crazy noises in the background, in particular if it sounds like a fan is going absolutely fucking crazy. That's my laptop. As soon as I start recording on this, it goes absolutely mental, and uh, yeah, it just decides to make a ton of noise, so there you have it. But anyway, enough of that waffling, we'll get stuck into the deck profile. So we're effectively, we're running two of each copies of the main beasts. I think this is pretty self-explanatory. These can be kind of bricky. You just want a set in the deck for the main combo, which I'll get to in a minute which is the combo that leads to an OTK. These, of course, are normally very, very difficult to summon out, so usually we're going to be getting these out using additional effects from other cards, or, of course, using them for our fusions. We have a second copy of the new Raviel. I think one is perfectly fine. It's really the only one that you need to run on top of your main beasts here. We've got a single copy of Dark Summoning Beast here. Of course, you can use this to get out the beasts or, of course, banish it from the grave so that you can add them to your hand. I think one is perfectly plenty. Some people like to run more, but I find it just really bricky if I do that. One works absolutely fine for me. We are running triple copies of Chaos Core. This is an important part of that OTK combo, which I'm going to go ahead and show you shortly in this video. Uh, we'll get to that in a moment. I think that the three is perfectly good. Again, you want to have them into your deck. You want to have access to them as and when you need them. I think three works great. We have triple copies of Dark Beckoning Beast. This is the starter card for that combo that I've told you about, which we'll get to in just a second. So when it's normal summon, you can add any of the, uh, the beasts themselves or something that specifically lists them in their name to your hand. Usually we're going to use this to add our gates to our hand and then go off from there. This, of course, gives you access to another additional normal summon of a fiend with zero attack and zero defense. Again, I'll show you that combo now. Okay, so as promised, we're going to go ahead and show you this basic combo. So all you actually need is Dark Beckoning Beast plus one card to discard. So we're going to go ahead and normal summon the beast and then activate its effect, of course. We're going to use that to add the gates. We then activate the gates. So we can add the core. We then use the additional normal summon so that we can get the core on the field. We then want to link off our Dark Beckoning Beast into Almirage. We can then use Almirage's effect to target the core. We then use a the core effect to send all three of the big boys. We can then use the second effect of Gates to bring out this one. We can then link these into the classic Vert Anaconda. And of course Vert Anaconda being the bullshit card it is, we can go ahead and do this. Take your pick. Let's go with this guy because he's got 10k attack. So of course this does leave you open to a good old fashioned Rogerin from Nibiru but if you're going to go ahead and hedge your bets so you can just OTK your opponent with this, this is a pretty good line of play especially considering all you need is one card plus a discard. 
Now, again, this isn't the kind of thing that you're going to do for an opening play, but if you're going second and your opponent hasn't set up a particularly resilient border, they've left themselves susceptible, this is a really good way to clear them up. So now that you've seen that combo, of course, you can see how important this is to the deck alongside this here. And this is exactly why we're running three of each copy. You really want to open this so you've got access to that combo as quickly as possible. We've then got triple copies of Chaos Summoning Beast. Of course, this can go ahead and special summon any of the Sacred Beasts from your hand, which is, of course, fantastic. Exactly what you want in this deck, because otherwise they're kind of bricky. It's also the fact that you can banish it to go ahead and add the uh, field spell to your hand, which can, of course, let you go further down your line of plays. So again, from a monster lineup perspective, I think this is pretty standard and exactly what anyone should be running. Of course, if you think you're going to go second, which a lot of people will, then you'll probably want to add in hand traps and that kind of thing if you want to. Personally, I don't think there's enough room in here to add enough hand traps to make it worth your while. So instead, we're going to go ahead and use blowout cards that can just be completely ignorant of our opponent, regardless of if we're going first or second. We've got triple copies of Law of Darkness. You want to dig into this deck as quickly as possible. And of course, this is going to help you get there. Pretty much everything is dark, so it really doesn't matter what you banish. You can just go ahead and go about your plays as quickly as possible. We've got a single copy of One for One. This, of course, gets out your beastie boy here. Uh, pretty self-explanatory on that front, I believe. We've got a single copy of Terraform. We're running two different field spells in here, so, of course, you want access to them as quickly as possible. And this is just going to help you get there. We've got Foolish Burial. This can be used to send, well, pretty much anything you want, and, of course, it can set up your plays from there. This is here purely to get out your big fusion boys, which of course you will have seen in the tutorial exactly. You can go ahead and do that. We've got a single copy of Call by the Grave. This deck is insanely susceptible to hand traps. Unfortunately, this doesn't stop Gamma, but it's one of those things that you kind of just have to take the hit on. It does stop pretty much every other hand trap you need to worry about. And of course, it's good going first or going second because you can use it to interrupt your opponent during their turn when going second. We then got triple copies of Super Poly. This is one of these blowout cards I was promising to you that we can just be ignorant of our opponents, wrap their board up, especially stuff like Dragon Link can really struggle to deal with cards like this, particularly because it can't be responded to. So this can normally get rid of a couple of key pieces and allow you to break through their board and go in for the big OTK. Cerulean Skyfire seems to be one that I see a lot of people running more copies of. I don't really understand that. In my tested one has been perfectly fine. I haven't really felt the need for more. You can of course up this if you really want to. The gates is a really, really important part of our combo and very, very good in the deck in general. So I've maxed out on these as much as possible. Of course, three copies is what we have available to us. We then have the two field spells that I'm running here, Mound of the Bound Creator. Of course, this wasn't intended for these bad boys here, I don't believe, but it is a very good card in this deck. It just offers an additional layer of protection and all that good stuff. We then have Fallen Paradise, which of course is a key part of the deck as well. Just a really strong, powerful field spell, as always you can expect. This allows you to draw deep into your deck as quickly as possible. Hyper Blaze is primarily here for its secondary effect because, because of course, we're not planning to actually hard summon Uriah pretty much at any point in this game. Of course, you could theoretically do, but that's not something we're going to do. And of course, the second effect is exactly what you want it for, being able to get back any of your big beastie boys as quickly as possible and push for big damage. Sacred Beast Awakening is a really, really cool card. Of, apart from the fact that it's a continuous trap, so of course, can come up to your eye, although it doesn't, again, really come up very often. The effects on this card are really, really strong. The first one giving you an absolute huge boost to life points, especially if you're getting, playing against like a combo deck or something. Now, it is worth noting that life points aren't everything, and anyone who plays competitive Yu-Gi-Oh! will tell you that, but getting a massive boost can give you an additional couple of turns to see the cards you need to, particularly if you're having a bricky day. This can just help you get along those lines. The second effect is pretty handy, but the third one is the real boost here. Being able to banish all of your opponent's cards that are sent to the graveyard is absolutely insane. Well, they're monsters, at least. Can be incredibly powerful against any kind of combo deck or whatever. This is going to entirely switch them off, and that, of course, is a massive boost. We then move on to the extra deck here. So Armitage in here, of course, for your combo. Just a massive 10k beater by the time you're done with it, which is just absolutely insane. We've got the new Armitage in here. This is, of course, being able to give to your opponent and facilitate those OTKs and all of that good stuff. Of course, being able to get rid of your opponent's field as well is just absolutely ridiculous. We then move on to some super poly targets here. So we've got Predator Plant. This could be anything really, but I think that this is a really good option given the Dragon Link is so prominent in the format at the moment. There are so many dark dragons or so many dark monsters in general. This can help you get there. And if they leave two and you've got one, then that can help you get over the line as well. Starving Venom is probably the most generic, powerful 
super poly target that you've got available to you. So, of course, you want to include that in here. And then Muddy Mud Dragon or Mud Dragon of the Swamp, the uh, fusion version of Muddy Mud Dragon, is the one that will wrap up pretty much anything else. We can easily make Gustav Max and do a ton of damage to our opponent, so that's in here for that reason. There is, of course, plenty of other cards, including this extra deck, but this was one that I felt was kind of a nice touch and can usually get you over the line. Master King Archfiend, of course, we're running Fiend, so being able to dump stuff into the graveyard and being able to get your plays going is a nice touch. We've then got a couple of Nightmares here. This is just great utility. If you have the space, you can include the likes of IP Masquerader in here as well to help set these up during your opponent's turn. I didn't feel I had the space, but if you're going to cut anything, probably... Gustav Max would be the one to go. Barricade Board Blocker, of course, searches many of the cards in this deck, so a very, very useful utility card to have in here. Cross Sheep, because we're running a fusion-based deck, so of course that's exactly what you want. And much the same for Vert Anaconda. I believe the Vert Anaconda is absolutely mandatory in this. Unfortunately, it is the one expensive card that you absolutely need to play in here. The deck is pretty much unplayable without it. We then have a single copy of Link Rebo because we run level 1s and it just gives you another layer of protection. And then Al Mirage, of course, is absolutely crucial for that combo I showed you earlier. And that, my friends, is all for today's video. Congratulations on being one of those weirdos who's made it this far into the video. You should possibly reevaluate your life choices. But hopefully by the fact that you made it this far into the video and you haven't turned off for some weird reason, you've liked it enough to have hit subscribe and the notification bell, or at least hate it enough that you couldn't possibly look away. But in either case, thank you very much for coming along. Whilst I've got your attention, it's worth knowing that this isn't the only kind of content we do on the channel. Things are a bit limited to how things are going on in the world, and it means that the amount of content and the style of content we can bump out is a little bit lower than usual. However, once normal service resumes in the coming weeks, hopefully at least here in the UK, we'll be able to get you some face-to-face -face deck profiles, some Locals vlogs again, which you'll be able to see how badly I'm doing back at Locals after a long time not being able to play the game properly. It's certainly not face-to-face. -face. And of course, once events are back, we'll be doing vlogs for those as well. We'll be back to doing combo tutorials, more how to play videos, and a hell of a lot more variety, including some commentary and the likes from myself. Now, if there is something you'd like to see on the channel that you haven't seen so far, maybe you have some suggestions about the kind of content that you do like to watch, you can go ahead and reach out on pretty much any kind of social media. The links are down in the description to all of mine, and you can reach out and let me know exactly what you want to see. Or, of course, you can leave YouTube comments if you prefer. I do read as many of those as I possibly have the time to do so. But anyway, I've definitely waffled on long enough. Thank you very much for coming along. I do appreciate you being here, and I'll see you in the next one. This content is brought to you in association with my buddies over at Jam Jam Cards UK. You can find the links to the eBay store and the Facebook page in the description.